Here's another part of our conversation with former Grand Funk lead man, Mark Farner. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music. Grand Funk had huge albums in the 70s, like Closer to Home from 1970, which featured the title tune along with I'm Your Captain. E Pluribus Funk were an American band which featured the title song, All the Girls in the World Beware. And there were hits like Locomotion, Some Kind of Wonderful, and Bad Time. Here's Mark Farner. You look, I talked to uh, Joey from Badfinger, and I told him, I said, well, I talked to Mark Farner. I says about, you know, there's, there's, and even talking to Graham Goble of LRB, what, how they were screwed over. You know, there's old CCR, you know, yes. John, uh, and all that stuff. Um, when did you know something was wrong? When I received notice that I was no longer an officer in the GFR corporation and, uh, and notice that, that Don and Mel were going to go out and tour uh, with or without me, kind of like an ultimatum after being uh, slapped in the face, I was kind of going, uh, uh, <laughs> uh what, <laughs> you know, uh, I really didn't catch on. And, and it, I mean, it was kind of painfully becoming obvious to me, of course, but I, I thought, man, this, could this be real? And, uh, and it, and it was sure enough, but I'm a trusting person, John, and other people that have taken advantage of me, have done so at their own peril because I will not let anything like that bother me because it's not worth it. It's really not worth it. My power is my power and I'm not giving it to anybody and I'm not letting somebody try to lead me along into some game they're playing. It's just childish and we got to get past that childish stuff. Um, I'm ready to make amends. This is where my heart is. And this is the only course for peace. Forgiveness. What about Terry Knight though? What about going way back to, uh, to, to that, to that time? Well, I talked to Terry Knight before he was murdered. Son-in-law, uh, right? It wasn't his girlfriend's, uh, it was his, his daughter's, daughter's boyf boyfriend, right? Daughter's boyfriend. Right. She was like 17 and he was 28. So you talked to Terry before that, just before that happened? What was but that conversation like? I talked to him a year before he was murdered. Okay. And I told him that I wanted to let him know that I had forgiven him. I said, I, I hadn't forgotten. Of course, you would never want to forget else maybe you know it happened again you need another lesson like that no i got the lesson and i and i just told him i wanted to to set it straight between him and me that i wasn't holding any uh unforgiveness i i did uh let him know that i didn't appreciate him taking my publishing and he just kind of changed the subject i was wanting him to uh, man up and give my publishing back to me, but um, that didn't happen. But it's okay. Uh, was he just wired that way, though, Mark? You know, I, I I just saw a thing on Bernie Madoff, and one of his friends visited him before he died in prison a few years ago. She visited him, and um, and he he just basically he couldn't own it. He couldn't. It, she says, I guess he's not wired that way, but. What about Terry? Could, it, was there no universe where he could have manned up? No. No, it's, it was just the same as what you just described, Brother John. Yeah, he, he just couldn't go there. So what did he, what is it that he did? He took your publishing, but he also took, did he not take money from the band? Yes. The, the first European tour that we did, 1970, um, we netted like a million and a half dollars. And back then that was a lot of money. <laughs> I mean, seriously, uh, comparative dollars. Um, but he said, let's, because you don't want this uh, um, on your taxes, you're going to have to pay out the ass. 
He says, let's leave it in the most stable world currency in a Swiss bank account. Uh, I think Deutschmarks was the, the most stable at the time. And we said, okay, yeah, do that for us. He did it, but it, it wasn't for us. We never saw a dime of it. And the contract between Terry Knight and Capitol Records was exposed to the band when they had forced us into uh, either borrowing $400,000 from them. I'm talking about the attorneys, Terry's attorneys and Terry, because we were nearing the end of the three-year management contract and they had uh, compromised us to the point where we were frightened because of the infernal revenue service, you know, and uh, the possibility of them coming down in our. So they said, we will lend you the $400,000 if you'll sign another three-year contract with Goodnight Productions. The, I mean, is this sounding fishy to anyone? <laughs> so I said, you can't expect us to just make a decision like that on, on the spur of the moment. We're going to stand here and tell you yes or no. They said, okay, we'll go in the other room. You guys talk it over. <laughs> and, we, and I'm going, oh, my God, these guys, are, they aren't getting it. So they leave and they go in the other room. And I said, well, what are we going to do, guys? Here we are. And I felt it coming. I felt something bad. But I walked over and I sat down in this attorney's big chair overlooking New York City. And I, I kind of leaned back and I kicked my feet up on his desk. And then I sat up. And when I did, my foot dragged across that top, that big drawer and those old wooden desk. And here the drawer came open. I sat up and here's a contract between Goodnight Productions, Terry Knight and Capitol Records. He had told us that the 6% that the band was receiving was more than the Beatles got. And it may have been, I don't know. So we just thought, wow, this is cool. We're getting more than the Beatles. We didn't know. We didn't have anything to compare it to. We didn't have anybody representing us between us and Terry. And that was our biggest mistake. But here's this contract, Goodnight Productions, 16%, Brother John. So that meant he, Terry was taking 10 of it letting the band split six of it and taking a management commission of that 6% that he was paying us. Yeah. Did he steal money from us? Did he, did he abuse us? Did he? Yeah. He couldn't help himself. You probably could relate though, when you'd hear, you know, the, the, what happened with bad finger. I mean, that was just awful. Two guys killed themselves, you know, Joey and Tom. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, well, I didn't know about the CCR stuff till I was about 15. I looked back and I remember reading up on it going, wow, you know, things like that. You're going, how, how do people think it's see the normal person would think, how can they sleep at night? They sleep fine. Yep. Because you're not wired like them. You couldn't sleep at night. You right. couldn't sleep at night. Right. But they sleep fine. Yep. Exactly. Buddy. We'll have more from Mark Farner coming up next week. Make sure you comment on our videos, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos. Buy a t-shirt, help support the channel. If you want to make a donation, there's a link at the very top in the description of this video. I'm John Bowden. Take care of yourself.